Well, I am very fortunate to have been raised in a farm environment. My father was a vocational agriculture teacher and my mother was a first grade school teacher. So in a small community of Sandersville, Georgia, um, I thought it was a great place to grow up and to become familiar with what uh, the world is all about, starting with agriculture, which is really one of the basic sources uh, of income for our state. Um, I grew up doing the kind of things that farm boys do. I got involved in 4-H and then I got involved in FFA, showing livestock, participating in public speaking competitions. And I think all of that just prepared me for a life of public service. Well, that's a good question and I'm very proud of what we've been able to do with the old 4-H camp on Jekyll Island. It's almost a 17-acre tract on a very pristine part of Jekyll Island itself. Uh, when I first had the opportunity to see it, um, I was appalled at the condition. It was an old building facility. Uh, had, they'd done their best to keep it up, but age had taken its toll. And I decided our young people needed a better place uh, to be able to come to a camp. So we were able to convince the General Assembly in 2016, and they put $17 million into the budget for the purposes of totally reconstructing uh, that facility. And we did. We tore the old facilities down and started from scratch, and it is a beautiful campus that has now been created, and uh, I am very pleased that, and we've expanded the use of it by virtue of that, and it's now sort of become a year-round facility that uh, where people come and uh, it gives a good impression of our state. It certainly gives a good impression of agriculture and agriculture education. Well, it's hard to, to specify one particular part of our economy that has been affected but because I think agriculture, like every facet of our economy, has been affected by the good times that we are now enjoying. Um, Agriculture depends on people who buy their products. And we've seen our population grow from the 10th largest state to the 8th largest state. So there are more people that depend on the produce that is produced by our agriculture. And more and more in modern times, exports have become important to the agriculture community. And the Port of Savannah is a key ingredient in that. We have continued to put money in. We are now well over what was originally contemplated as the state's share of the deepening of the Savannah port and the harbor, and it is on schedule, I am told. And what that does is it allows the larger vessels to come in, and that helps agriculture because if they are exporting products overseas, they need to have timely ability to export their product, get it to the marketplace as soon as possible. And as a result of what we've done, We've seen our exports from Georgia continue to grow rather rapidly. Now, also in terms of uh, what we've done for agriculture, um, I think uh, this most recent session of the General Assembly, where I called a special session after Hurricane Matthew, was specifically aimed at trying to help uh, the heartland that was impacted by that particular hurricane. Uh, we had about uh, $270 million that was allocated uh, for an emergency funding. It helped to replenish the coffers of state agencies that had used their resources to respond to the, to the disaster. It was used also to help local governments respond. And also we had some $200 million that we created in a, a loan fund uh, and a tax credit fund, really, for uh, the agriculture community to take advantage of it primarily aimed at being able to replant some of our forests that were devastated by the hurricane and to help those pecan growers to be able to replant uh, their pecan orchards that in many cases were totally destroyed. So those are some of the highlights of it, but I think overall agriculture benefits from every other thing that has happened in our state's economy. <laughs> well, I have a lot of them, as you can imagine. It's sort of like uh, when I've asked, well, what particular part of what you did are you most proud of? I'm proud of all of it. I mean, I'll give you a, a laundry list very quickly. Uh, first of all, we started in my first State of the State address. I addressed the issue of criminal justice reform and what we needed there. 
and it has been a huge success. We have added to the initial program every year that I've been governor. We've seen our prison population drop below 8,000, below what it was projected to be in 2016. We've seen our state not have to spend millions of dollars building new adult prisons. Uh, we've seen people's lives change because of accountability courts. Those with addictions, having those addictions treated in a meaningful manner have allowed them to reunite families, to go back to work instead of being a drain on the taxpayers. We've actually calculated that uh, the accountability courts have saved the state about over $38 million a year in terms of people who would have been a drain on the taxpayer sitting in a, in a prison cell, now being out working and paying taxes. The fact that we didn't have to have as many people uh, in our foster care system because they can be reunited with their parents. It's a, been a multiple success on many fronts. I'm, tr I'm proud of the transportation reforms we've been able to make. 2015, the legislature uh, followed my advice and took the courageous votes that it took to reform the way we fund our infrastructure. And infrastructure improvements help agriculture because you have to have good roads and bridges in order to transport your products and your raw materials in and out. And um, as a result of that, we have about $1 billion a year uh, in extra revenue to be able to address those infrastructure needs. We had not looked at the system that we were using to fund infrastructure in 40 years. And a lot of things changed in 40 years, including the great growth in our population. So I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the educational reforms. Uh, we have focused on job creation and we are now rapidly approaching 800,000 new private sector jobs since I took office uh, almost eight years ago. And that's something we should be proud of. We continue to have those announcements. Now I know sometimes the rural communities think that uh, it's all in metropolitan Atlanta. Well, the case, that is not the case. In fact, last year, 80% of our global commerce initiatives through our Department of Economic Development were outside of metropolitan Atlanta. That's where we see the manufacturing facilities locating because they can, they can find people who are willing to work and have the job skills. And that's where our emphasis on our technical colleges and utilizing them more fully has occurred. We now have 17 job categories where jobs exist and not enough trained Georgians to take those jobs. We started out the first year, we had four categories. Every year we've added categories to it and we're now up to that 17 number. And the beauty of that is if someone will go to one of our technical colleges and get a certificate or a degree in one of those 17 areas, we will pay 100% of their tuition through our HOPE Career Grant. And the success is that overall 99.2% of them get a job. Um, that's the most phenomenal government program I've ever seen to link education to employability. So there are a lot of things that I am very proud of, and every one of those uh, affect the agriculture community. Let me mention one other thing that I like to thank the ag agriculture community for being willing to participate in being a partner in this, and that is the conservation of water and its use for agricultural irrigation purposes. As you may know, uh, our water wars uh, have taken a turn after Florida realized that when they sued us in the Supreme Court of the United States, they thought they could focus their case on metropolitan Atlanta's usage of water. When the facts came out, they realized that although Atlanta's population had grown substantially, their water use had dropped because of conservation methods that were being employed. So then they turned their attention on the agriculture community in South Georgia and uh, focused on whether or not we were metering our water system and our uh, irrigation systems and we have taken action. We even anticipated that before the special master pointed that out as one of the areas that we needed to work on. So we've already done that. I thank the agriculture community for being cooperative in that regard. Uh, but what it does is it gives us actual facts on which we can base the statistics of our water usage for irrigation for agriculture. Uh, in the, without that, George, uh, Florida was just making up numbers as to how much water we were using, and we had no factual data to rebut it. So as we have improved and expanded 
uh, the water metering system, it puts us in a much stronger position uh, with regard to the federal litigation. Well, I think as I get older and I look back upon the course of my life, um, I have to say that there was a higher power that was guiding me. Sometimes guiding me when I didn't want to be guided <laughs> by doors closing, but others opening. And uh, I think you have to be a person of faith to understand that these are reasons that you may not understand at the time, but if you accept them and you proceed to do your best in whatever you're allowed to do, uh, good things will happen. And I think God has guided me. I think He has blessed me and blessed my family. And I am constantly thankful for that. And I say my prayers every night and I thank Him for it. Well, I want to say to them what I've said to people all across this state. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for having faith in my administration. I especially thank them for supporting my wife as she went through uh, breast cancer surgery and her magnificent uh, recovery, which has been phenomenal. Uh, the letters that have gone to her and the prayers that have gone up on her behalf have really been appreciated. She's come through it with flying colors and I, I think she proved that women are indeed stronger than men. Uh, she went through all of it, the surgery, the chemo, the radiation, and she is yet to take a pain pill. I am not that strong. I complain when I have a backache, um, but she has done well. And the agriculture community and people in this state at large have been very, very supportive. And I think uh, that makes us feel that we have been appreciated and it makes us feel that uh, what we have done is going to have lasting significance. You know, I've been asked that question a lot, as you can imagine. I found the safest answer I can give is I'm going to do what Sandra tells me to do. <laughs> she overheard me say that one time, and she, she said, well, that'll be the first time he's done that. <laughs> she says that what we're going to do is rest, and I agree with her. We're, we're 76 years old, both of us, and uh, it's time to slow down a little bit. I think she also has on our agenda, she wants us to write our memoirs. And I tell her, I said, well, you better let's hurry up and get to do it because my memory is fading fast. <laughs> we'll have plenty to do, but uh, it'll be, be able to be done a little more leisurely and at our schedule. Uh, we've, we've been very busy. And I, I use her as an example. Uh, when you read to in every county, all 159, when you read in every school district, 181, and when you read in over a thousand individual classrooms to young children to encourage them to learn to read as she has done, um, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of energy. And uh, I am thankful that she was able to do that. And she set a great example too of what uh, first ladies can do when they take on significant projects and the importance of early learning and early reading skills uh, are one of the most important foundational skill sets that our children can have. And I, I think that she's done a great job of encouraging that. So we're thankful for a lot of things, uh, but that's sort of the summary of what we have been able to do and, and we appreciate the support. Uh, the people of this state are great people. That's one of the things that you, you learn when you go around the state is that whether they are in metropolitan areas, whether they're in deep South Georgia rural areas, they all have a same kind of upbeat spirit. 